why stick shifts are superior still. Stick shifts, manual transmissions, standard transmissions all mean the same thing. They're all either cars or motorcycles that have a clutch lever like this or a third pedal to the left of the brake pedal, being the clutch pedal. So number one, we have weight. In the red, I have the automatic transmission. In the blue are manual transmissions. Four speed, 4L60E made by GM. Wet and with the converter, you're talking about something that weighs approximately 225 pounds. The modern version of that would be the six speed GM6L80. 245 pounds wet with the converter. We're going back to the 80s, looking at some manual transmissions. We've got the T5, uh, which dry was only 95 pounds. I'll get to why that dry weight is kind of important in a second or later on. And then moving on to the counterparts to the 4L60E and the fourth gen Camaro Firebirds, the T56, six speed manual. You're talking about a transmission that only weighed 128 pounds wet. Modern version of that being the 6B TR6060, still use them in the Camaros and Challengers. Uh, that, that transmission came out to be exactly 146.2 pounds wet. So even though uh, these numbers are still missing, the uh, added weight of possibly a larger car uh, radiator, uh, vacuum lines and other hoses that link up in the engine bay from to and from the transmission, uh, you're talking about at least a 50 to 100 pound difference here overall in weight. If you know anything about racing, you know that you know your power weight ratio is everything. That's predominantly why you don't see ever, I think that I can think of one motorcycle that has an automatic transmission. But for the rest, all of them have manual transmissions. Number two, manual transmissions are physically smaller. I don't have any examples here for you, but if you've ever seen an automatic transmission sit next to a manual transmission, given that they have the same amount of gears, you'll notice that the manual is smaller. This is mainly for two reasons. One, it doesn't have to store a torque converter in the bell housing, so the bell housing is a little bit smaller. And two, it doesn't have a valve body underneath it. Those are two of the reasons why it also weighs more. Uh. Having a physically smaller transmission does play an impact on the performance of a car, but has much more of a, an impact on motorcycles, particularly in sport bikes where the emphasis is on aerodynamics and you know, as little drag as possible, so you need to make the bike as small as possible. You know, it already has wind resistance because of the size of the manual transmission. If it was any bigger, you're just slowing the bike down. Number three is drivetrain power loss. Now, this is one of those where there's not a lot of rigid science out there on it, but we know some things for sure, and that is that manual transmissions are more efficient at converting power from the flywheel to your tires and automatics are. I'm gonna cite a motor trend test where using the identical engine, they tested it with an automatic and a stick shift, and they found that on average, the automatic lost 33% of the engine's power and the stick shift only lost 21%. If you had an engine that produced 400 horsepower at the flywheel, that's a 48 horsepower difference, meaning if you really cared all out about performance, you would go with stick shift. Number four, less heat. Mainly because it's never been a concern for manual transmissions. We don't really know what they run in temperature wise, but it's just not hot enough. In general, I think it's about less than 140 degrees at operating temperature. But automatics definitely fluctuate. Most of the time they're gonna be running right around 200, maybe a little less degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but they can run upwards of 300 degrees Fahrenheit depending on how much load you're putting on them. Uh, this means that manuals do not need coolers or pumps or vacuum lines to help them shift or to keep them cool. It's just an encasement of long-lasting oil in there. Uh, now, back to why these actually were way more than what I've written down here, and that's because we do need coolers, pumps, possibly a larger radiator, more vacuum lines to help do what your left leg could be doing for you. Now, heat 
is an issue for performance because things don't run as well when they're too hot. Particularly, like say you have a car that's turbo, depending on how close that turbo is to transmission, it's gonna absorb some of that heat. And turbos, you want them to run cool, that's what the intercooler is there for. Heat, or too much heat, robs performance. We know this for simple reasons because, like say you need to just go a little bit faster, you could just throw a couple bags of ice underneath your hood, and you for a little while you would get more performance out of your car. You know, back to the five-speed T5 from the 80s, how I mentioned only the 95-pound dry weight, I put that because unlike an automatic where you need all the fluids in there and it's still going to disintegrate on its own, you could, in theory, reduce the amount of oil inside the casing of a manual transmission and you would decrease the, the amount of power loss through it. Same thing uh, works for an engine. You know, back in the NASCAR days, if they needed just a little bit more power, one thing that they would do was just drain a little bit of oil out of it. Uh, I've seen guys on the dynos where they're at like 495 horsepower and they want to get that solid 500 number and they just, no matter what they do, they can't get it. What they'll do is just drain a little bit of oil out and voila, um, they'll get that magic number. But that's something that you could do on a manual transmission without sacrificing too much of its longevity. Whereas if you did that on an automatic, it's just gonna overheat and blow up on you. Number five, instant shifts. Now I'm not talking about age pattern shifters here in cars. This is something that's always been present on motorcycles, but you could also convert your age pattern shifter to what's called a sequentially shifted manual transmission. I think MotoGP bikes use that, but it's also electrical now, even though they have clutch levers. This basically means that when you put it into that gear, it's in that gear. There's never a moment where it's not in the gear before it or the gear after it, like like a neutral gap. I hear a lot of guys brag about the, the shift times of their double clutch transmissions or their automatic transmissions being like microseconds or whatever, but that's still slower than the instant shifts from sequentially shifted manual transmission. This video is mainly for those people that chose the automatic version of a car that also came with the manual transmission because they say all they care about is all out performance. Gear for gear, assuming identical gear ratios, non-manual transmissions without breaking the laws of thermodynamics cannot be superior in performance. Like I don't understand what the big deal is. Just say you bought the auto version because it's more convenient for you. Like it's perfectly okay to buy a sports car because you like the way it looked or you wanted the status that comes from a car like that. It's perfectly okay to settle on the automatic because you wanted some of the fun that comes from cars like this, but without the necessary skill to pilot it towards ultimate performance. If automatic transmissions or double clutch transmissions were superior to manual transmissions, then the fastest bikes in the world, MotoGP bikes, would not have clutch levers, and the fastest cars in the world, Formula One cars, would not have clutch pedals. Simple as that. If you feel that I've earned it and you'd like to see more content like this, I would appreciate you liking this video, possibly subscribing and hitting that bell icon. If I'm wrong about anything, please let me know. Comment it down below, we can have a discussion there. I'm not trying to impose my beliefs on anybody. If I'm wrong, I'll absolutely own up to it and, and correct the information. Anything that I use in this video, I'll have, do my best to cite it below in the description. Thank you.